Hi folks, Florida Man here. Today I'm going over an opening called The Crimean Crusher. As usual with this format of video, I'll go over how the opening works, who uses it, why they use it, and how well it works. So the Crimean Crusher is a Turkish opening in which Turkey launches a fairly straightforward attack on Russia in spring 1901, moving Constantinople to Bulgaria, Ankara to Black Sea, and Smyrna to Armenia. This is the most anti-Russian opening possible for Turkey, so right off the bat, the obvious reason to open with this is to go after Russia. Usually, you would only make this opening if you are either thinking Austria is your ally, or that Russia is likely to attack you early. Otherwise, this opening is probably just a really good way of turning Russia against you early. Most Russians will not be very understanding of seeing a Turkey occupying Armenia in 1901, although admittedly, this is not always fatal to the Russian-Turkish relationship. However, a Turkey who believes he is working with Russia would virtually never do this, because if you're using it as a ruse, that's just not really worthwhile. Let's talk about how well this works. There are a couple of possible scenarios. Obviously, it does not work very well if you are trying to negotiate a juggernaut alliance. Perhaps more relevantly, this can also be a bad opening if you thought you had a neutral relationship with Russia and Austria, if things were not committed one way or another. That is, if you made an impulsive decision to go after Russia and did not actually have an alliance with Austria, I don't think this is a good move. It is a way of going after Russia, but unless you somehow convinced him not to bounce in the Black Sea, it's not a very effective and powerful opening. A unit in Armenia will probably not have any support for attacking Sevastopol in the fall, unless your move happens to convince Austria that he has a good reason to attack Russia now. There is a symbolic value to this move in that sense, because even though it probably turns Russia against you, it might also win Austria over to you. On the other hand, there's an almost equal chance of this move converting Russia and Austria into allies. By going after the Russians, you're very likely to give the Austrians the choice of who will be their ally between you and Russia. Whenever a move puts your fate in someone else's hands and takes it out of your own hands more than you absolutely need to, that move is always a gamble. And here, it looks like an unnecessary risk. Austria has about as good of a chance of taking the Russian side as of taking the Turkish side, which is a pretty bad expected value for such an aggressive opening. The exception is if Austria was being cautious and opened cautiously rather than in an anti-Russian way, but you had a strong sense that they were likely to commit to you. In that case, this opening might win them over, and it looks a bit less risky than I just described. Looking at the possibility that you successfully took the Black Sea, I should note that even if you successfully took the Black Sea, by deceiving Russia into leaving it vacant, this opening is probably still not going to be as effective against Russia as the most aggressive Russian openings are against Austria. You might be able to support an attack into Sevastopol, but unless you've won Austria over to your side, your hold on that space is almost certain to be temporary, because looking beyond the fall, you have only the Black Sea Fleet to support your unit in that center, and Russia will devote all its remaining units to retaking Sevastopol. Tricking Russia into leaving the Black Sea open does drastically increase the odds of success in taking Sevastopol, though. Admittedly, this comes at the sometimes terrible price of almost always permanently alienating the Russian player. If you trick your way into the Black Sea, Russia will mark you as completely untrustworthy, in a way that would not be true if you'd only succeeded in moving into Armenia, which Russia has no capacity to stop in spring 1901, unless Russia gives up the Black Sea. So unfortunately, where Turkey makes this opening unilaterally, the Crimean Crusher is just as likely to crush Turkey as it is to crush Russia. While some people would suggest this moveset is useful, even if you don't really want to fight Russia, because it gives you additional leverage for your next conversation with Russia, I would suggest to those people that you only get to poke the bear a certain number of times. What you're enjoying probably isn't additional leverage. You probably could have worked with Russia already. In fact, you may already be testing one of your most natural allies, Patience, with your opening, if you decided on going to Armenia for no real reason beyond leaving your options open. However, the other scenario is where you and Austria have already explicitly agreed to work together and ideally, you both made anti-Russian opening moves. In that scenario, Austria might be in Romania and or Galicia after the spring moves. And in that case, the two of you have a very good shot at holding both Romania and Sevastopol by the end of 1901, and you may be able to keep those spaces permanently. Many players don't like the Austro-Turkish alliance, also known as the Austronaut, and they have good reasons for feeling somewhat skeptical of that alliance, which will be addressed in a separate video. But if you and Austria have formed an alliance, the Crimean Crusher is almost certainly the right opening for Turkey. 
It enables the two of you to try and deliver a knockout blow to Russia early and decisively. And if you stand firmly together, you can parlay this into early dominance over a large region of the map. I think this is the most appropriate opening for a Turkey who is committed to working with Austria, essentially, and it's next to useless for any other Turkish player. I hope you liked this opening explanation. If you liked it, please like and subscribe to Florida Man Diplomacy. If you really like it, consider joining the people whose names now appear on screen by providing further support through Patreon or subtitle translations. Thank you for watching this Florida Man Diplomacy production. Until next time. Florida Man, out.